before we start this video, a large thank you to Schofield11, Cole, Gene, Gongdalhoon, Nickel, Arthur, Twin Dragon, and Sura. I hope I'm getting those pronunciations right. Nonetheless, thank you guys for your support, and I hope you enjoy the video. Hello guys, and today we're going to make an illusionary wall. So, you want to get your wall or your door set up here. I'm just going to drag mine out of here and rename it illusionary wall. Also, apologies if my voice sounds a bit strange today. I think I got the sniffles, or at least I'm just getting over it. So, I'm going to rename that illusionary wall, and then we're going to actually drop down, and it's the, it's the material we want, sorry. And we're going to change the rendering mode from opaque to transparent. Now, you would think you want fade, but I found it had a weird artifact in it when I did it, so I like using transparent. You can try fade if you like. I honestly don't know why this one appeared to work better for me, but as you can see, if you lower the alpha to zero over time, you can completely see through it. So that is what we want. Now, let's add a script to this. I'm going to call this script Illusionary Wall. And we have a couple more things going on than just draining the alpha, and I'll show you what I mean. So let's start off by putting in our namespace. I'm going to put mine up here as SG. And then we're going to erase the start and update function. And I'm just going to make a bunch of public variables. I'm going to use publics. I'm going to drag them in instead of calling them on awake just because I want to check a couple things for debugging purposes. And then I can see it in the, uh, the inspector. So I'm going to say public bool wall has been hit. And I'm going to say public material. I'm going to call this the illusionary wall material. And uh, you may want to instantiate this material on startup um, because if you just use it as it is now, the material itself will be changed even after the game stops. But if you don't mind that, we're just going to keep it like that for now. Uh, then we're going to say public float alpha. And then we're going to say public float fade timer. And I'm going to say this is 2.5F. Um, this will be approximately how long it takes for the wall to fully fade out. So uh, we're going to say public box collider, which will be the collider of the wall. We're going to call that wall collider. We're going to disable that after the wall has been hit. The alpha is just the alpha component of the wall's color. And I have that public again just for some debugging purposes. I want to view a few things after the video is over. Um, then we're going to say public audio source. Uh, and we're going to make a clip um, called illusionary wall sound. And this will fire once when the wall has been struck to let you know that you've hit an illusionary wall. Okay, so we're going to start out by saying public void fade illusionary wall. And you can do this with a coroutine instead of a void, which would negate the need for an update method, but I'm just going to use a void right now. Um, we're going to say alpha equals illusionary wall dot color dot a. And then we're going to say alpha is equal to alpha minus time dot delta time divided by fade timer. And then we're going to say, we're going to actually make a color variable. So we're just going to say color. And the variable we named faded wall color. And we're going to initialize that at a new color. And it's going to be 1, 1, 1. And then it's going to be the alpha. So the color will stay the same, but the alpha will change. And we're going to be calling this uh, if the wall is struck on an update method. So it's going to go down in increments over time. The color will keep changing and it will keep being applied to the wall. And then we're going to say, illusionary wall whoops and say illusionary wall material dot color is equal to faded wall color and then we're going to say if wall collider is enabled well we're going to disable that and since this will only happen once even though it's called on an update uh, function because if it has been disabled it won't be enabled anymore we're also going to play our sound clip here we're going to say audio source dot play one shot and then we're going to play our illusionary wall sound and we do it here so the sound isn't playing every frame because this will be called on an update method and then right below that we're going to say if the alpha is less than or equal to zero we're going to destroy this game object because it has completely faded out and we no longer need it in the scene there we go okay so now let's make the update method and we're just going to say on the update method if wall has been hit then we're going to call the function fade illusionary wall and again you could do a use a coroutine here and that would really negate any necessity or need for an update function uh, but i'm going to use the update function and the uh, the void here as i think it's easier to demonstrate for video purposes so then we're going to say on trigger enter we want to check if the wall has been hit if something comes into collision with this 
And we're going to say if other tag is equal to character, then we're going to actually say wall has been hit equals true. Actually, you know what? I'm going to change that to player. That way random characters in the game can't just walk into the wall and open it up like enemies and monsters and whatnot. Um, wouldn't want that. Actually, I'm going to go a step even further. I am going to... Let's just drag in this sound clip first. And I'll edit that in a second. And then let's add an audio source component to this wall and drag that in. Okay. And then let's drag in... Let's make sure loop is unchecked. Yeah, that's all good. Now let's drag in the wall collider and the material itself. So make sure you drag in the material on this object right now. So that's going to be right below here. Mine is called wall illusionary. And again, if you want uh, the materials not edit all things as material, you have to instantiate a copy of that material on startup. Otherwise, you'll edit every other thing with that material as well. So I'm actually going to erase the on trigger enter because we have a damage collider that gets uh, that checks when we swing our sword. So on trigger enter, this is for our damage collider. I'm going to say if collision dot tag is illusionary wall. So if you're swinging your weapon and you strike an illusionary wall, or if you throw a spell and it hits an illusionary wall, we're going to say illusionary wall of type illusionary wall variable equals get component collision dot get component illusionary wall. And then we're going to say if the sword has hit it and the tag is illusionary wall, we're going to say illusionary wall dot wall has been hit equals true. So basically in simple terms, if you swing a sword or throw a spell and it hits an illusionary wall and it has that tag, then we'll just we'll change the bool to true from there. So that should be fine. Let's change our tag. Let's add a tag. And I'm just going to paste illusionary wall. And then I'm going to say the tag here, illusionary wall, and we should be good. So now if I walk to this wall and I hit it, there we go. It fades out and the clutter disables. Excellent. All right, guys. Now you have a fully working illusionary wall. I hope you enjoyed this video. In the next one, we're actually going to go back and do some more work on the AI because we will soon begin uh, the boss events and other world events. So if you did like this video, please leave a comment, drop a like, does help get my video around. And if you're feeling super generous, check out my Patreon below. I also have a new series in the works, so hopefully I'll get the first episode of that out very soon. So until then, guys, I will see you in the next one where hopefully we will begin some work on our AI, particularly aimed at getting our boss events started.